So today we're going to do the handover video on this personal Azeo I 744. We're going to start on the outside and then we're going to move on to the inside. I'd firstly like just to start the video by saying the van hasn't yet had a valet, but it'll all be spick and span for when you come to collect. So coming over to the passenger side, you'll notice you've got your passenger door here and just beside the passenger door, you've also got your fill up point, which in here houses your diesel and also your fill up point for your ad blue now your ad blue has been topped up from factory and when that is running low you'll get a little indicator on the dash to indicate that you need to fill that up opening up the passenger door you'll notice that you've got remis cab blinds fitted to this vehicle to operate these blinds simply pull the plastic a strip like so and pull them across and let them connect up via the magnetic strip and as you can see that does a really good job at blacking out the, the, the entire window. You've got the same on the other side of the vehicle as well as the front windows here and the big front window right at the front all you need to do just unstrap them and pull them in the center they will connect up and there's three magnets in there which will allow them to connect and stay shut. On the passenger side as well, you've got your bonnet release catch, which is just located here. It's a little bit difficult to see on the video, but you can see just here, uh, that's how you release the bonnet. And you've also got your tire inflation kit, which is in this pocket here. So with the bonnet open, hopefully you don't need to know many things underneath here, but if you do, you've got your positive terminal underneath here for when you jump starting. All you need to do is flick this cap up and put your positive onto there and your negative can just go onto this earth point here and that is how you jump start the vehicle as i say fingers crossed you don't need to know that um or you don't need to use it that much but if you do you can uh, mount your negative and positive there in the engine just to point out a couple more things as well you'll notice that you've got your engine oil which is back here you've also got your engine coolant uh, which is just here. Above, you've also got your brake disc fluid, and then right in the corner here, you've got your washer fluid for the front windscreen. Moving around to the side of the vehicle, you'll notice that you've got a Thule Omnistar awning fitted to the vehicle. Now, with this awning, uh, there's two key things to remember. I will send you a separate video showing you how this can be operated, but please bear in mind that if it is windy, you need to really take the awning in. Because if you use this in wind, as you can appreciate, if you get a little bit of wind underneath here, you could potentially run the risk um, of it snapping and pulling off the side of the vehicle. Because in essence, it's like having a massive sail on the side of the vehicle. So number one rule is if it's windy, take it back in. And also number two, if it is raining, although the awning can be used in rain, you do need to dry it out at some point. You don't really want to store uh, the awning back in for a long period when it's wet because all that, that will lead to is obviously mould and it'll eventually rot the, uh, the awning so just bear that in mind. Now like I mentioned to actually use this awning I will send you a separate video showing you how that can be used correctly. Next up you've then got your habitation doors this is the main door into the body of the motorhome we'll obviously jump in there shortly and you can see next up you've got your fridge vents here. This is where the fridge pulls all of its air from and allows the fridge to cool its contents. Now, as you can appreciate, if it is, if it is an extremely hot day uh, and you've got the sun beating down on this side of the vehicle, the fridge isn't gonna work as efficiently as you'd like it to. So what I'd recommend is try and keep this area in the shade, perhaps pull the awning out or turn it the other way out of the sun's direct uh, line. Uh, that will just allow the fridge to run a little bit more efficiently. You can also buy winter covers for these as well. The winter covers just slot, these remove and the covers just slot in between them. Um, and that's really for when you're storing the vehicle uh, in cold climates. So next up, just below the uh, lowest fridge vent, you can see that you've got your gas barbecue point here. Now to operate this, you'll need a pigtail or a piece of pipe, which will then connect into here via a bayonet fitting. Uh, and then providing your gas bottle uh, it's turned on, which I'll show you how to do when we move on to the side of the vehicle. All you need to do is turn this red lever and that will release the gas and allow you to use your external barbecue. So it's dead easy, dead simple, uh, but just bear in mind, you will need a pipe and a bayonet fitting in order to connect it up to this external point here. Next up, you've then got your cassette locker. Uh, in the locker, you can see you've got your cassette, which all you need to do is pull up on this orange tab and slide the cassette out towards you. 
Before removing this, please ensure that the blade on the toilet is closed. Uh, the blade is a piece of plastic that's fixed to the toilet and that is on the inside of the van. So of course, I'll show you where that uh, is when we move on to the inside, but please ensure that is closed. If that blade is open, what may happen is you'll come to remove the cassette and the cassette may get caught. Um, and what can happen is if you continue to pull that, uh, you could potentially break uh, the float which will be connected to the blade so just please ensure that before you remove the cassette that blade is closed and that will allow you to remove the cassette freely so when it comes to draining this down like I say pull up on this orange tab and slide the cassette out towards you and once the cassette is all the way out all you'll need to do is turn the funnel like so remove the grey cap using the orange button on the back that will release an internal vacuum allowing you to empty the entire contents of the cassette out nice and easily. There'll be a grid on site that you can obviously dispose of the waste. If you're using blue fluid or anything that breaks down the waste that can go directly into this cap and there's a little measurement on there to indicate how much fluid you require. Once you've done that, stick this back on and slide the funnel back into position. You will also notice that you've got this orange lever here, so that actually turns. This is what makes contact with the blade when you open and close it, so please ensure that this remains in this position. Um, if it is off slightly, you'll go to pop the cassette back in, uh, and again, it'll get jammed. So the easiest way to look at it is if it came out like this, it needs to go back in like this. So just simply leave that as is. Okay, okay. and once the, the cassette is all emptied, all you need to do is pop it back into its uh, locker, slide that in, and ensure that that orange handle is connected into here. So that's nice and solid. That cassette isn't going anywhere. Moving on, we've then got an external socket, which is here. We can wire this up to your TV, aerial should you need to, but the majority of people, as you can imagine, will just use this as an external socket. Now bear in mind, just on here, you will need an adapter because currently it is set for a continental plug. So just get a UK adapter that can go in there and you can use that as an external 230 volt socket should you need to. And in the rear of the vehicle, of course, you've got your garage. So this garage is fully heated and insulated. So if you're putting anything damp in here, don't worry about it. It will keep it nice and warm. You'll also notice you've got some tie down points, which is just here. You can slide these and fit these throughout the vehicle. There's a rail here and also the other side, so take some bungee cord with you if you want to tie anything down. In the back here, you can see it looks like a little bit of a mess at the moment. I've just put everything in here just to keep the clutter out of the vehicle, but you can see you've got your bed ladders for your front drop-down bed. You've then got your carpets. You've then got, as you can see here, your um, Vario seat. Now, this Vario seat will allow you to travel with an additional person, and I'll show you how that can be connected in shortly. And then right in the back as well, there's some cushions there, which we'll see on the other side and there uh, to allow your um, uh, front dinette to birth get makeup. So that's where they are. You'll also notice that you've got a 230 volt socket here. Should you want to charge any devices or if you've got electric e-bikes when you're on site, you can charge them batteries up through the garage. On the back wall, we've also got some awning winders. So you've got an awning winder here. You've also got your rear steady winder, which is here. So this vehicle has been fitted with rear steadies, which are just located there. And all you need to do is connect that up via the bolt and then wind that down. I can't do it in this video, unfortunately, because I've only got the one hand. Um, but if you'd like me to show you on handover, just give us a shout and I'll be happy to show you. Now you'll notice, moving away from the garage, you've got a bike rack on the back. And you'll notice there's an additional winder here this winder actually connects onto this point here you can connect that on pull the um uh, the bike rack down uh, and then all you've got to do is wind that that will then allow you to wind that down to easily put your bikes on once your bikes are on you'll notice you've got these little tie down points here which just loop around the wheel and allow that to be fixed into position You've also got some arms on here as well, which will connect onto the uh, the bike rack, uh, uh, sorry, the bike's framework, and then you can tighten them into position. Once you've done that, just wind it back up, nice and easy. Again, on handover, if you'd like me to show you that, that's not a problem, just let me know, and I'll happily show you. Moving around to the rear of the motorhome, you can see right up at the top of the window, you have got your reversing camera. 
that will give you a nice wide angle view uh, when putting the vehicle into reverse and on the other side you'll notice you've got another locker door here to give you access into the garage and these are the cushions that I were talking about earlier for your dinette to birth kit which as I say I will show you shortly Moving on, we've then got your hookup cable for your 230 volt electric. So when you're on your main at your campsite and you want to plug into mains electric, all you'll need to do is connect your hookup cable through here. That will allow you to use your sockets throughout the vehicle because that will give you the ability to use 230 volt electric and it will also charge your leisure batteries which are fitted in the motorhome. Moving on, we've then got your gas locker. And in your gas locker, you can see you've got um, you've got uh, these racks here which will take two gas bottles these will actually take two 13 gas, uh, kg gas bottles so they are plenty big enough for when you're wild camping they'll last you a fair bit of time then now you'll notice that you've got your gas regulator which is fitted up here you'll need something called a gas pigtail and that pigtail will feed into the bottle and then feed into the gas regulator all it does really is just connect the bottle up to the vehicle and that will allow all the gas to flow through nice and safely when you're traveling obviously ensure that all your gas bottles are securely tied down and if you bring a gas bottle on the day i'll be happy to connect them up for you um, but also ensure that when you're traveling as indicated by the sticker in the corner here that your gas is turned off at the bottle you do not want to be traveling with gas on because as you can imagine if you are involved in an incident or a crash it's highly flammable so it's extremely dangerous so just bear that in mind so when you're traveling turn your gas off now directly below the gas locker you'll notice there's a little sticker here now this brings us on to your first drain down point in the vehicle this is your wastewater drain down point which you'll notice the discharge pipe is just located pretty much directly under uh, your gas locker now you'll also notice that you've got this metal rod here now somewhere in the vehicle you'll have a little plastic handle that plastic handle will slot onto there and all you've got to do is turn that handle that will then allow you to empty the contents of the wastewater tank so it's dead easy and dead simple all you'll need to do is line yourself up uh, on site there'll be a big grid line yourself up with that grid turn that and drain down your wastewater tank now you've got a few drain down points in the vehicle uh, you've got your wastewater drain down point you've got your fresh water drain down point and also your boiler drain down point we'll come to them shortly uh, i'm nearly there um, but what I'd personally recommend is once you've drained down the majority of water on site Leave all of your tanks open because as you're traveling home the vibrations of the road will ensure all that water makes its way out Next up we've then got your Truma um, Vent this is in essence the vehicle's chimney. It can get quite hot this so just bear that in mind You might want to give it a bit of a wide berth and then next to that you've then got your convenience locker within the convenience locker you can see that you've got your fresh water tank you've also got a couple of drain down points and a fill cap for your drain uh, for your fresh water tank so firstly if you're wanting to clean the tank you've got this big red uh, um, cap here that you can remove all you've got to do turn that to remove it and you can wipe the inside of the tank out now personally i don't really see it that necessary uh, to clean the tank out regular because uh, as you can imagine there's only fresh water uh, that's sitting in there the only time to clean it out is I'd say once a year you can also buy a purifying tablet uh, which can go directly into the fresh water tank um, and that will just purify and san sanitize everything uh, in that tank but if you wanted to clean it out you can remove that red cap if you're wanting to fill the tank up all you've got to do is remove this blue cap and as I mentioned you've got this black overspill cap all you've got to do pop that on there and then using a food grade hose pipe that can go into there you can fill up your tank now obviously ensure that your drain down point on your fresh water tank is sealed your drain down point is just here I'll come back to that in a minute um, but always ensure when you're filling this tank up that you use a food grade hose pipe The reason for that is you won't get any bacteria build up in the pipe for when you're putting your water into it Because what can happen if you use a normal hose pipe is bacteria will build up and it could end up in your fresh water tank So it's not it's not good. So always ensure that you use a food grade hose pipe 
Now, coming back over to your drain down point, as I mentioned, this black valve will allow you to close and open the tank should you need to. Obviously, when you're filling it up, you need that closed. But when you're not using the vehicle, you need to always ensure that everything is drained down. So like I mentioned about the wastewater tank, once you've finished on site, you need to line your van up with the uh, grid on site and then simply drain down the tank. There's a couple of options to drain this tank down. As you can see um, with, this, uh, with this sticker here, this tank will hold 120 litres of water. Um, you can, if you're wanting to, drain it down to 20 litres. So as a quick drain down point, the manufacturer has designed it. So if, say, for example, you're travelling to your next site, but you want to keep a little bit of water in the vehicle, you can drain the entire tank down to 20 litres as a quick drain down point. The reason for that is the manufacturer recommend that when you're travelling, you should only travel with a, a maximum of 20 litres in the tank. That's really to do with weight distribution and, of course, payload. So just bear that in mind. Now, to drain it down, simply turn this like so. And I don't know whether you heard that, but I'll do it again. There is a little, quite difficult to hear actually on the, on the, on the camera, but there is a little lug. Uh, you can actually feel it a lot more when you turn uh, this, uh, this black dial. So when you turn that valve, you'll feel a little lug. And what that will do, uh, if you turn it up into that, that lug, that will drain everything down to 20 litres. As I mentioned, you can drain it down quickly. If you're wanting to drain the entire tank down, just keep turning past that lug. You'll hear a little click and you'll actually feel the dial uh, as you're turning it. Uh, and that will then drain the entire tank uh, so the entire 120 litres. So if you're not using the vehicle, uh, you, you're finished on site, you're going home, simply turn that past that lug, let that click, and that will drain down the entire tank. But if you're wanting to keep 20 litres in the vehicle, all you've got to do is turn this dial up to that, that lug, and then, as I say, it'll be good to go. You can keep 20 litres in that tank. So that's filling up and draining down your fresh water tank. Your final drain down points are actually your boiler um, drain down points. Now the great thing with Bursa is they put everything uh, in, one, um, uh, in one locker. This is what's known as your convenience locker. So it's dead easy to get to. For your boiler, you've got two drain down points linked to it. First, you've got this frost protection valve. So the frost protection valve at the moment is open. You know it's open because the diamond is facing that way towards the vehicle and you can see there's a little black nib that's popped up on the side of it, uh, sorry, on the top of it. And then right down at the bottom here, again, it's gonna be a little bit difficult to see because of this, these pipes here, um, but there we are. There's a little blue tab that's just popped out there. To seal this unit, all you need to do is turn the diamond so it's facing towards you. You'll notice the black nib on the inside pops in. And then that blue tab on the side there, all you've got to do is press that in and that will then seal the unit. That will then hold water in the boiler. To seal everything on the, on the, um, on the hot line, so, cause that'll do your boiler, but everything beyond the boiler, um, so this goes for your taps and things, all you need to do is just ping this yellow uh, switch down and that will then seal all your taps and whatnot. So in the up position, that is open, you can drain it and then just flick it down to seal it. And that's for everything from the boiler beyond. So this is the boiler and that's for everything beyond it. Now coming back to your frost protection valve, uh, at the moment, as I've say, it is sealed. So all you've got to do to drain that, turn that diamond across, you'll notice that blue button on the side pings out and then the black nib on the inside of the diamond pops up. Now, what may happen um, is, because this is a frost protection valve, um, what can sometimes happen um, is this reacts to temperature. So when it thinks that it's you know getting to below freezing, where it could potentially freeze the water in the boiler, it will automatically drop and dump the water for you. It's actually really clever. Now, a lot of people obviously um, then question will this drain down if i'm using the vehicle it won't it will only drain down when you, you you've not got your heating on you're not using the vehicle because the boiler is on the inside of the van basically if if you're going to freeze the water could freeze so if you're using the vehicle in extremely cold climates you're going to have your heating on and what that will do that will keep that area nice and warm so it won't uh, trip and it won't just um, drain all your water automatically 
Um, but what can happen is if you've not used the vehicle in a while, uh, it will just automatically sense uh, that temperature difference uh, or that temperature change and it will drain it automatically for you. What can also happen as well is when you come to drain, uh, sorry, come to seal this unit, you'll turn the diamond like so and then the blue button on the side you'll go to, to push in because that's what seals it and what sometimes may happen is that blue button will keep pinging out it won't allow you to push that button in so it's flush the reason for that is that indicates that at the time it is too cold um, so it's in fear that this uh, boiler is actually going to freeze because as I say this reacts to temperature so if that happens all you'll need to do is jump on the inside of the vehicle turn your heating on and that will heat this area up as I mentioned um, that will heat it up after about 30 minutes that will then allow you to pop that that blue button in on the side and seal the boiler um, so it's a really good system you've just got to be aware of when it can kick in uh, but as I say this is a fail safe in my opinion you should still I would advise still draining everything down as you would get into the habit of doing it in the summer months it's not as key to drain everything down but in my opinion I personally say get into the habit of draining everything down so then you know where everything is because we often find the customers that don't drain it down all year round are the ones who tend to forget where the drain down points are and forget to obviously drain it down during the winter equally as well you don't want any stagnant water in the vehicle as you can appreciate so to drain it down as I say just once more that flicks across black nib comes up and the blue tab on the side pings out and then to drain everything from the boiler beyond flick that yellow valve up as you can see and then you're good to go and then finally before we move on to the inside of the vehicle you can see that you've got your external shower point here so the external shower head will just connect into this bayonet fitting You've then got a little switch here to turn the pump on. You will need your pump on the inside of the vehicle to be on as well. Just bear that in mind. And then you can decide between hot or cold and that will just allow you, allow the water to come through. And on the actual shower head, there's a little uh, switch that you can click and the water will come out. So it's dead simple. That is your external shower. Now that concludes the handover on the outside. We're now gonna jump onto the inside. Okie dokie, so we're now on the inside of the motorhome. You can see as I walk through the habitation door, uh, on the door you've got a fly screen here. You've also got a blackout blind um, on the main window. And of course you've got these blinds and fly screens throughout the vehicle on each of your windows. As I walk through, you've got your main control panel um, just to the right of you. You can see here you've got your on and off button. And as you can see, that will turn off all your lights uh, that will basically isolate your leisure battery, it'll turn it on and off. To turn your lights on, individually you've got all of your little switches here and you can see that you've got your main switches just onto here for uh, the rest of the vehicle. Coming back to the panel, you've then got your leisure battery vehicle, uh, volt sorry, leisure battery voltage here. If I hold that down you can see where the voltage is. At the moment we're not plugged in so you can see it's reading slightly low and then for the vehicle battery voltage if i hold that into position again you can see at the point just on this dial what it's reading for your fresh water level just click this button up at the top now you can see nothing is showing up at the moment because i've not got any fresh water in the vehicle but if i do have any fresh water you will then get a reading similar to like you had for your, your vehicle um, and your leisure uh, on this side it will show it on this side for your fresh water below here you've also got the same for the wastewater if I hold that again nothing's coming up because everything's drained down currently especially given the weather we've got uh, but again you will get a reading on here to indicate how full that is and then finally on this side if I click that you've then got your pump button now obviously only run the pump button once you've got water in the vehicle you don't want to be running it when you've not because all that will happen is you'll burn the pump out eventually. Um, but when you're on site, fill up with your fresh water, as I've shown you. Click that pump button and then go to all of your taps, including your shower, uh, and turn them to hot. What that will do is it will pull fresh water from the fresh water tank into the boiler and then out of the tap. It will spurt and splutter initially, but then when it's running steadily, you've primed your system uh, for your hot water. 
Once you've done that, flick it over to cold and do the exact same. It will uh, spurt and splutter at first, but when it's running steadily, you've primed your system. Once you've done that, you can actually leave your pump on because on each of your taps, you've got something called a micro switch, which will activate and deactivate the pump whenever you need it. A little bit like when you're at home. Uh, the only time you really need to turn that pump off is, of course, when you're not using the vehicle. Um, now, or oh, you do run out of water, of course. Uh, now, just bear that in mind as well. I would personally recommend sticking it onto the hot first because that will just allow you to run water through the boiler. Because if you do that, um, if that's the first thing you do, when you go to your heating and you turn your water heating on, that will then allow the vehicle or allow the boiler rather to get that water up to temperature. So by the time you've got everything set up in the vehicle, that water should be nice and warm. Because unlike home where it gives you instant hot water, this obviously isn't as powerful uh, as your heater at home. This is going to take a little bit of time. So do that as soon as you walk in the vehicle and you set up. Because by the time you've got everything sorted, after about 30 minutes or so, that water will be nice and warm. Now to actually run the heating system, it is dead easy. It's just next to the main control panel here, as you can see. And if I click that little button there, you can see, there we are. Everything below the line is what we want to select. Using this dial, you can flick through the options as well. So firstly, we've got your vehicle's temperature. If I click that, you can take this all the way up to 30 degrees, should you want to. And you just turn the dial to select and then press that in. Next up, you've then got your water temperature. So you can either have this on eco, hot or boost. Now, eco is approximately um, 40 degrees. Uh, hot is approximately 70 degrees and boost will concentrate on rather than heating the vehicle it will concentrate on heating the water um, now in most situations you'll probably have it on eco uh, for obviously when you're having a shower and things but if you're washing up in the vehicle you're better off having it on hot and if it is a really cool day you might want to stick it on boost next up you've then got the option of fuel so this is where you select what fuel you want to power the boiler uh, sorry to power the heating rather You've got firstly the option of gas, you've got the option of mix one, which is a mixture of gas and one kilowatt electric, mix two, which is a mixture of gas and two kilowatt electric, EL1, which is just purely one kilowatt electric, or EL2, which is purely two kilowatt electric. Now, when will you use uh, what fuel? So, obviously when you're hooked up on site, nine times out of ten, you're going to run your heating off your EL2, because that is what you're paying for. In certain sites, especially abroad, uh, they won't provide you with much power. So you may be limited to running this system off EL1, which is, as I say, one kilowatt electric. Now, you can appreciate in a vehicle of this size, it's going to struggle heating this vehicle on one kilowatt electric. So what I'd recommend is, if that is the case, either stick it on mix one, which, as I say, is a mixture of gas and one kilowatt electric, or just purely gas. Um, from my experience, when it is a cold, cold day, uh, and you are forced to obviously stick it onto uh, a mixture I'd, or a lower wattage, I'd literally just recommend sticking it straight on gas. Your gas will be a lot more powerful in this uh, situation. It'll get it up to temperature much quicker as well. Um, so just bear that in mind. It's also really key and really important that you select the correct fuel that you've got um, for reasons that will become apparent shortly. Um, but we'll come back to that. So coming back up to the panel, we've spoken about your temperature for the vehicle, the water temperature, obviously the fuel, and then the option, as you can see here, for the fan. Now at the moment, because I've not got anything selected, it's only giving me the option of vent. What vent will do is that will recirculate the air in the vehicle. Um, and that will just give the vehicle a little bit of airflow. It works quite well during the summer. If I then obviously have one of these selected, one of these, uh, these options, so I've had the, the vehicle heating on, what will happen is it will give me on that an option of having it on high or eco uh, sorry eco or high so eco will of course turn the fan on and high is just a more intensified version of that fan and it'll just allow the heating to as i say uh, run a little bit more uh, powerful um so just bear that in mind as i say that will only come on when she once you have selected a uh, a fuel and you've obviously selected a temperature on the vehicle heating so coming back up to the panel 
You've then got a timer, so you can set a timer of when you want the uh, the, the heating to come on and when you want it to turn off, which is quite handy if you've been out on a walk. You've then got the time on the panel, so you can change the time on there. And then finally, you've got the settings panel. So in the settings panel, the main thing that you need to know is the reset button. There's a couple other things like obviously the language and the brightness of the screen, but like I said, the main thing you need to know is the reset button. Now, the reason you'll need to reset the, uh, the panel is if you ever get an error code um, that presents itself. Now, the reason you'll typically get an error code uh, is going back to what I was saying, is if you select the wrong fuel. So to give you an example, I'm currently not plugged into mains electric and I've no gas in the vehicle. So say, for example, if I was to select gas on the panel at the moment uh, and I was to select uh, a temperature. So I wanted so I'm telling the vehicle that I want it to fuel the, the vehicle with uh, with gas uh, and obviously for it to run the temperature, uh, or the heat in the vehicle, rather. All that will happen is an error code will present itself and I will need to. Uh, reset the panel because in essence the boiler is trying to heat itself with something that it's just not got so just bear that in mind you want to ideally select a fuel that you've got in some scenarios um, what might happen is the the fuel may run out and if that ever does you will get an error code on this panel so if you ever get that error code just simply go into the settings click reset and that will allow you to reset the entire panel and then you'll be good to go Another thing as well, just to remember, is before removing the fuel, so say for example you're, you're running this off electric, so before uh, removing the hookup cable to then uh, you know, move to your next site, always turn this panel off. Because if you remove the electric out of the panel, again, you're just taking the fuel away from the boiler, so you'll just get an error code next time you come to use the van, which again can be a bit frustrating, so just bear that in mind. Now when you come to actually reset the panel as well, you'll need to click reset. Uh, it'll then ask you to preset it, just click again. Obviously if you get to this issue, at this point, just give us a call. Um, but then the screen will flicker and then after about 30 minutes or so, it'll be ready to use again. So just bear that in mind. Turning it off, all you've got to do is hold this button in. As you can see, it lights up and then just says off and that control panel is off and then you're good. To, uh, to move on to your next site or go home wherever you're going next. So directly opposite the control panel, you can see that you've got your Avtex Wi-Fi system that's been fitted in the motorhome. Now, I'm actually gonna show you the Wi-Fi uh, on the day. It'll be much easier and much simpler to, to show you that way. And um, there's two little SIM card slots underneath there. Just bring a SIM card with you on the day and I can set that up for you. Your password's on the side. And like I said, we'll set that up uh, for when you come. Underneath, you've also got a point for a telly, which just goes onto here. Uh, you've also got your 230 volt socket and your 12 volt point for when your telly sits onto there. So turning around into the lounge area, you can see you've got an L-shaped lounge set up here. Uh, you've got a little bit of storage underneath this uh, this small seat here. Uh, just bear in mind, you've not got anything underneath here because this is actually where your boiler and your fresh water tank is located because your locker is on the other side. Now. Like I mentioned, uh, this vehicle has two additions uh, added to it. You've got the first addition being you can add a uh, Vario seat onto here, which is a fifth travelling seat. Um, so firstly, to show you how that works, all you need to do is just remove the seat back and base. And you can see it leaves these points free, which is actually uh, bolted into the framework of the vehicle. So as you can see, all I've done, I've just pulled out... Uh, that Vario seat from the garage and then as you can see that just lines up with the bottom here and just connects into here there's two little bolts as well where you can then tighten this into position and then to bring the seat base down there's a little clip here just pull that towards you and then you can pull the seat base down and just like so you can see your seat base is down and you've got your belt there to belt yourself in and that will allow you to travel with five uh, passengers and obviously once that's out, or once you're on site rather, just remove that, stick that back in the garage and then you can put your cushions back on and you're back to your front lounge. The second option that this vehicle has been spec with as well is of course a dinette to birth kit. Uh, the dinette to birth kit will allow you to sleep a further two guests. So all you need to do is drop down this table. This table then drops into this position and then using the black cushions, 
the black one of the black cushions will slot into here into the middle and then you've got another one that then fills this area up and this will create a double bed again i'll show you how that operates now so as you can see, I've just dropped the table down. There's a little clip underneath. All you've got to do is pull up on the table and then push it down. Uh, and that has then slotted into this area here. And as you can see, the infill just slots into here. The next cushion here, which is next to me, actually clips into these points here, as you can see. So then grey tabs, uh, then brown tabs rather, connect into there. You've then got a leg that flips out and folds out and allows you to sleep, um, as I say, two people into this section. And just like so, that is all set up, ready for bed. I've just removed them now, we're now back to your lounge. Um, you've then got your drop down bed, obviously, along uh, the front of the vehicle. So to drop this down, all you need to do is fold these seats forward and then make sure that you've got your key turned and that will then allow you to press this button and drop the bed down. So you can see I've just folded them down forwards, press that button, that will then drop electrically into position. Now it will stop automatically when it gets to its uh, height, just like so. You've got a net on here as well if anyone is sleeping on here. Uh, and the rule with this bed, same goes for the rear bed as well, is with all your bedding, leave that on. Just be mindful how thick that bedding is because sometimes if it's really thick the bed will struggle to go all the way up um, and what i'd recommend is just with your pillows store them elsewhere in the vehicle perhaps in your rear cupboard um, and then when it's ready for for bed just pop them back onto the bed just because as i say if you put your pillows on there your bed will struggle just to uh to go into position and lock in so just bear that in mind now a lot of people obviously wonder if something goes wrong with this bed um you know what what what's the options of uh, of getting it up or down now the majority of times what tends to happen with the beds if there is a fault with them is you tend to blow a fuse now your fuses are actually located underneath your passenger seat so if anything goes wrong if you do blow a fuse you can just go underneath there and i'd recommend taking some spare fuses with you um just some generic fuses will do from halfords um dead simple as i say to to remove and replace if something goes wrong but that's typically what happens you blow a fuse the reason for that is if say for example you've overloaded the bed i.e you've put you know too thick a mattress uh, duvet on there or your pillows are remaining on there you may blow a fuse so just take some spare with you because worst case scenario you can simply just flick them out uh if a fuse doesn't help uh, and if that doesn't sort the issue you have got a manual override should you need it. So for the front bed, if I take this bed up, it'll be easier to show you, um, but you can actually see there, that little black ring there, that slots into there and you can wind um, the bed up or down. So I've just taken the bed uh, back up. Uh, as you can see, there is your the black ring there. Um, so all you need to do is just slot that into there, the motor is through there, and then you can wind the bed up or down should you need to. Again, you've got the same for uh, the rear bed, which I'll show you how that can be done. So dead easy. But like I said, the majority of time, it's very rarely the motor that fails. It tends to just be a fuse that blows um, to obviously protect the motor. So just take some spare fuses with you. As you'll notice through the vehicle as well, this is all on one level, thanks to a double height floor that bursts have integrated throughout the vehicle. Now, you've got some really good bits of storage in these pockets here. So you've got two through the vehicle. You've got one in the center of the van and also one at the front here. Just simply press one side in, that plastic clip will release and you can pull this piece out. You can see it's pretty deep and it's great for any shoes or anything like that. That is fully heated and insulated as well should you want to put anything wet in there so moving on from the lounge and uh, going into your kitchen area obviously we've discussed about priming the system uh, and turning your pump on and off uh, in here you've also got a three burner hob which is all powered off the gas you've then got your oven and grill which is just below that and you've also got a really good bit of storage throughout the vehicle as you can see they've done really well to maximize the space uh, if i open this cupboard again you, you'll notice that you've got a few accessories down here which we can go through on handover but up at the top here underneath your sink you've got some uh, uh, some gas isolation valves 
um, you don't need to do anything with these just simply leave these as they are um, these are really designed for the technicians when we're working on the vehicle they will allow us to isolate certain areas of the vehicle when we're doing various gas tests and things like that um, so just leave them as they are but I just wanted to point them out to you just so you wasn't confused as to what they were uh, you've also got a little bit more storage down here as well where the wheel arches and of course your cutlery drawer underneath your oven and grill above here you've also got a 230 volt socket as i mentioned on the outside of the vehicle you do need to be plugged into 230 volt electric in order for that to operate you've got some light switches as well for the kitchen area and then finally this is a little uh tank heater as you can see that lights up orange um for your waste water tank uh the waste water tank is the only thing that can actually freeze when you're using the vehicle because every other tank is actually on board the motorhome the waste water tank is under slung the uh, outside of the vehicle so if you if it is a really cool day all you need to do is pop that heater on so flick that on like so and that will heat that tank up um to obviously prevent it from freezing if it is a really really cool day i'm talking you know minus seven plus i would personally recommend leaving that tank open um, just to ensure any water finds its way out because sometimes obviously if it's in that condition um it can't always be guaranteed that this is going to be enough so just bear that in mind you don't want to be stuck with frozen water in the vehicle as you can appreciate so directly opposite your kitchen you've then got your fridge so you've got a bit of uh, work uh, sorry a bit of storage up here uh, and then you've got your thetford fridge which is here to turn this on all you need to do is hold this on button simple as that uh, hold the square button like so until this starts flashing and then using these arrows you can then navigate through the options um, of what you want to select now the great thing with this fridge is you've got the A button there that will stand for automatic and that will automatically assign whatever fuel you've got supplied to the fridge to power it. You can then change the temperature, I'm going to leave it on as that and you can say by default because I've no electric, uh, 12 volt or gas, it's just selecting gas. I'm going to turn that off for the time being just like so but I've left it on A um, so it will automatically as I say find whatever fuel you've got. Now, there's three ways to fuel it, as I say, it's a three-way fridge. Um, leave it on A because on a, it'll just find it automatically. But just to run through the options with you, you've got your 230 volt electric, so you'll run that off um, uh, electric when you're on site, hooked up. You've got your 12 volt leisure battery. When you're traveling, um, that will then allow you to power the fridge. Uh, and then you've got your gas for when you're wild camping. Now, a lot of people think that they can run the fridge off uh, their 12 volt leisure battery when they're wild camping. However, that is not the case. As you can appreciate, uh, it draws a lot of power the fridge. So the only reason you can run it off your 12 volt leisure battery for when you're traveling is there is an alternator that's built into the front of the vehicle. So when the vehicle battery is on, it will send power via the alternator into the leisure battery and then into the fridge. Um, the only time that is the only time you can run it off your 12 volt. So when you're wild camping, you're stationary, you've not got your ignition on, it needs to be on gas. But leave it on A, and that will obviously just uh, decide whatever fuel you've got and select it for you. You then got your temperature selector here, as I discussed. Uh, you can then also select if you want the fridge to recirculate the air as well. You've got your freezer up at the top, fridge below. You've also got pull out fridge here as well right at the bottom it's a really good bit of space now directly uh, above the kitchen area you can see that you've got your uh, aircon system uh, which is really nice that it's central to the vehicle uh, you'll have a remote somewhere I've not found it yet but there'll be a remote somewhere in the vehicle uh, there's a little power button on that it's pretty simple to be honest you just click power and then you can click your fan and that will then allow the aircon to work now please bear in mind this will of course only work when you're plugged into 230 volt mains electric so just bear that in mind and it might also be worth especially when you're going abroad just checking what um with your sites what what power you are supplied with because on certain sites you're not supplied with much and you don't want to trip your vehicle or even the campsite by running the aircon so just bear that in mind um, but if you want me to run through that in greater detail on the day just give us a shout and i happily will do
Okay, okay, so we're moving from the kitchen into uh, the rear of the vehicle now. You can see that you've got your shower on one side, which is a, a really good size. Uh, obviously, we discussed about priming the system for that, so there's not much to that, to be honest. Um, opening up the door, this actually folds across, as you can see, and divides the two spaces. And this also gives you access to uh, the toilet area. Uh, again, same in here for priming your system. The main thing that we need to discuss is the toilet. So on the outside of the van, when I was showing you how to empty the cassette, I mentioned something called the blade. The blade is this piece of plastic here. And like I said, it allows you to open and close the cassette. Pull it across like so, that will open the cassette, push it away from you to close it. Now, when the cassette is in use, of course, you need to open the blade. That will allow all the com uh, all the um, ways to drop into the cassette. Uh, and once you've done that, there's a little blue button up there. Click that blue button and that will activate your flush. Uh, once that's all flushed into the cassette, you need to shut the close the blade. Now you close the blade for two reasons. The main reason being is it stops any odors from escaping, but two and most importantly, it just gets you into the ha habit of having that closed. So when you come to remove the cassette next, it won't get caught or jammed. Now, as I say, you've got a flush button up here. Um, just bear in mind, you will need your pump on for that to activate. Uh, and when the cassette is looking full, there'll be a little red light on here, which will light up and indicate red uh, to show you when you need to uh, empty it. You've also got some more storage in here as well, and you've also got a fan, um, which is quite handy to have in your in your bathroom. Uh, there's a 12 volt, this is a 12 volt fan, a little power button there, and that will allow you to turn uh, the fan on and off, should you want to. And then finally, as you can see, we are in the rear of the motorhome. Um, on the side here, <coughs> you can see you've got a really good bit of hanging space. You've also got an additional door here which will pull across and you've also got your lights here where you can uh, you can dim the lights in the back uh, just by holding uh, these down. Now on all your windows as I mentioned you've got blackout blinds and also fly screens on each of them and to open these up all you need to do is turn each of the black plastic pieces and let that slot out like so. You may be able to hear, but there are a little, uh, there's a little click that's going on there. That will then allow you to hold the window into position. And then when you want to bring it all the way back in, all you've got to do is press it all the way up and drop the window down. When you're traveling, you need to ensure that these are sealed correctly. You can put these on venting should you want to, just to allow a little bit of airflow through the vehicle. But please ensure when you're traveling, these are sealed correctly like so you don't want any wind getting underneath here the same goes for all your skylights throughout the motorhome as well make sure they are securely fastened down and obviously all your lockers are sealed and closed okie dokie so in the in the rear you've also got your drop down bed which is above here it works very similar to the drop down bed uh, in the front in the fact that it is electric so you've got this little key here turn that and that will allow you to drop the bed and take it up like so now to get this bed to uh, the lowest point possible all you need to do is remove these cushions which i'll do for you now and as you can see the cushions are now pulled out i just tend to slot them down here they fit in quite nicely that way and whilst the cushions are up as well on the backrest you can see that you've got your heating pipe that just runs the length of the uh, the rear you'll notice that you've got these slits in the pipe um, it's not accidental, this is how it's designed. Um, the way that this works is this pumps air uh, around the, the, the back of the vehicle um, and just takes that chill off the back of your head when you're sitting around here. It just eliminates any cold or hot spot, uh, spots throughout the vehicle. Now, coming back, all you've got to do, as I say, make sure that the area is clear. Click that button and then you can drop the bed all the way down like so. Again, just be mindful with the weight uh, that you're putting onto this bed, um, i.e. your duvets and stuff like that. And then once it's all the way down, it'll stop automatically, just like so. You can see it comes down really far, actually. And then you've got a little slide-out step here, which connects in via that little black uh, uh, <coughs> bracket there. And then you can go on your bed. 
on the on each side you have got a net should you want to use it you'll also notice that you've got these these boards as well you can slot these boards uh, either side of the bed again just to stop you from rolling out should you need it and then once your bed's up out of the way you're good to lounge about again now like the uh, the front uh, bed that I showed you this has got a manual override just open up this locker you can see there is the motor and the manual override will just go into there um, it's just a long piece of metal basically that slots into there with a hexagon nut on it again I will show you that on the day um, of your handover but that just slots into there and again will allow you to wind the bed up and down should you need it uh, and that concludes today's handover video uh, the front cab I will go through with you uh, on the day of your collection um, but that is pretty much everything um, to conclude how everything works in the vehicle uh, so we look forward to seeing you on handover and I hope you enjoyed the video